Visiting Hoi An is like visiting a living museum. It was the most important trading port in Southeast Asia in the 16th and 17th century. It traded items like silk, ceramics and spices with China, Japan, Europe, India and even Arabia. Like all port cities, all these influences have left an indelible mark. So revered was Hoi An to the Japanese, they believed the very heart of all Asia, represented by a dragon, lived deep beneath the city. About 200 years ago, one long forgotten people gained power over another, and other ports became bigger centres for trade. Hoi An sat forgotten, the jewel of the South China Sea, left to crumble and decay. Then, over time, visitors came by foot when once they came by sea. The dragon awoke from its slumber and once again the sounds of artisans and merchants filled the ancient streets. While wandering the old town early one morning, I came across a group of women performing exercises. Being on the road and a little out of shape, I asked if I could join in. I then joined the group for breakfast, where I met Twat, who ran a local beauty parlour. I visited Twat's work, where I met Eric, a Swiss sculptor. Given Hoi An's history, I thought Eric would be a good person to interview about the city. The first time when I came to Hoi An six years ago, I felt this special energy of the city. And I didn't really know what, what it was, but I was really touched about uh, that energy. And then I realized that the, the value of Hoi An, this is, it's so balanced. It's very, very well balanced. And you can see the situation, the geographic situation. It's in the middle of Vietnam, between north and south. It's in the middle of the climate, between the cold and the warm. So, I mean, the, yeah, you can feel the situation very balanced. And this is the, me the mentality of the people here that... Uh, no give you, even as a foreigner, all this, this feeling. I was accepted from the first moment when I start to live here. I need some help. I, will, I receive the help. If they have their parties in the family or in the quarter of the town, I'm invited. From the first moment I made, I, I'm a part of this, this life here. So this is what impressed me the most. The point of view of hand working, that gives me a very strong uh, therapy feeling. It relaxes me and uh, to be creative, to look for the right form. This is a uh, a therapy of life. While filming at Eric's shop, a friend of his, a sham dancer, arrived. I persuaded her to dance on camera, and another aspect of Hoi An's rich history was revealed to me. The sham people were believed to have settled central Vietnam from Borneo. From the 7th to the 10th century, they controlled the spice and silk trade, and Hoi An was their commercial capital. Wow, no wonder this place is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Eric suggested I visit Marble Mountain, about 25 kilometres north. It is a centre for stone workers and also has some Buddhist shrines and subterranean caves. I wandered deep down into the mountain where I found sculptors had created a vision of hell. Maybe not the best place for a family outing.